Welcome back to another edition of Chats from the Blog Cabin. Today, I'm joined by the Tracy Vasquez. The, I love that. I love the way you put that in there. Tracy's actually like, like one of my heart people, you know, I wanted, I had an idea a while ago and she jumped on board and we created a mastermind together. But well, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But Tracy, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. This is so cool. I love, I feel like I'm on a talk show. Like we had like an intro. Like I feel like we need like a, a laugh track now. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So as Melissa said, I'm Tracy. Um, I'm a woman of many passions and many talents, if I do say so myself. So we'll get into that in just a little bit. But um, I live here in Raleigh um, with my husband, with my dog. And yeah, I'm just super excited to talk to you guys today about things that I'm passionate about. And you have a lot of things that you're passionate about. So let's talk. Why don't we just hop on and talk about social media business? Because you actually have your own social media business. So tell us about that. Yeah, I do. It kind of just um, it was not an intentional thing that I started, but it just kind of happened, which kind of sounds annoying if you're trying to start a business <laughs> for someone to just like accidentally start a business. But um, I work with small businesses. Um, I specifically have a niche for um uh, dietitians and other brands that are trying to um, present health from a weight neutral standpoint. So a lot of the messaging is about um, help pursuing health without the um, intention of weight loss. Um, but I do coaching for other, I'm not taking on any more um, actual clients, but I do coaching for um, other ba brands and businesses. Yeah, to give them a social media strategy, to get them started, to give them their own um, brand look and kind of like the course thank you for putting that up there we go there's some work samples that i've done before i need to update that because i've done a lot more since then um but yeah i just i'm really passionate about brands connecting with their audience and helping them to get their message um across so what would be the number one thing that if a brand is looking to like hire you what would be the number one thing that they should do yeah, so on that, actually, I think it's maybe not on the bottom of that page. Maybe it's on the other page. There is like a, a survey you can fill out. It gives me your information. It kind of tells me what, um, I think it's under services. Is it under services? Under social media services. That's, yeah. Um, there you go. Yeah, at the bottom of that, um, you can set up an initial consultation, and we'll kind of walk through the, the form, um, ask just like what you're looking for, what things you have going on now, how you want me to help, those kinds of things. But yeah, I'd be happy to coach anyone and to help you set up a strategy that will work for you that's sustainable. So oftentimes I find, not just in social media, but in life, we have the best of intentions and then we have a hard time staying the course, so to speak. So if somebody was just starting out in social media, can you give them like one tip that would help them maybe just a little bit? Yeah, I would say really identify who you are talking to. Who is the person that you want to reach? What do they like to do? Um, what kind of car do they drive? Um, what do they do in their free time? What kind of stores do they shop at? And then when you're crafting those posts to them, speak to that person. Speak directly to that person. I mean, for we're going to talk about my podcast in just a little bit, but we have a name. Like her name is Jessica. And so when we create, we say, what is Jessica? need to hear like what do we need to tell Jessica and then work from there so where did you come up with the name Jessica out of all the names you could have picked <laughs> I don't know it was like a long day of working on content and things like that and we um just kind of workshopped through what what things she likes what things she doesn't like and we just for whatever reason landed on the name Jessica I don't know <laughs> you just landed on the name I love that how you we just landed on the name of Jessica yeah now your Instagram, you actually kind of changed around on your Instagram a little bit because um, you used to focus more on, I think it was fashion. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's been, I think it's a reflection of what I've learned over the past few years. I still love fashion. I still love clothes. That has not changed. But I think my heart has changed a lot around um, body image and around helping women um, make peace with their body. And so, yeah, I still, I still love fashion, though. But it, I think my, my message has shifted as I've 
grown. And I think that's, I think that's true of any brand or business. I think as you grow and as you change, your message does shift a bit. I also love how you um, contact brands and you ask them, why don't they have things in plus size or in my size? Yes. yes. Oh gosh. Yeah. I probably, and a lot of brands reach out to me too. And I probably on a weekly basis have to send an email of, I love your site. However, nothing on there fits me. The largest thing that you have is a large. <laughs> so. So yeah. I have, how has um, companies responded back with that? Usually it's a canned response of, oh, okay, well, we'll let you know when we have more inclusive sizing, but there's never a plan of action of like how they're going to do that. So to me, it's, it's just, just fluff. Just a, yeah, brush off. Wow. Yeah. Let's talk about, since we're talking about your fashion and the um, sizing, let's talk about body imaging coaching because you actually have a really unique approach. You and your partner have a unique approach on this. So tell me about that. Yeah. So um, I offer individual, we'll talk about the podcast in just a little bit, but I offer individual body coaching, body image coaching. Um, I think for me, um, my whole identity, I think as a woman and just living in the society, our identities are wrapped up in the way that we look. And if we don't fit a certain ideal, we feel like we don't fit in in society. And I always thought it was about um, losing more weight to look more like, you know, the thin ideal that our society has for health, success, whatever. If you look at any successful person, they kind of all fit this like one mold. Mm -hmm. And so as I dug deeper um, in myself, as I reflected deeper in myself and just did a lot of work in therapy and unpacking it, um, it really wasn't even about the way I looked. It was about like belonging and fitting in and wanting to be accepted, wanting to be loved. And I think we all have this, um, this story that we tell ourselves that we're not good enough for whatever reason, everyone carries like a different wound. Um, and mine was around, you know, the way I looked. Um, but I think when you do the work of unpacking that and you say like, okay, well, this is about my body. When you start to really dig deeper, it's not about your body. It's about something deeper and your body will change over your lifetime. That's just the way they're designed to be. We don't look like we, we do like we did in high school. We just don't. It, you know, our bodies change, whether it's through pregnancy or, you know, um, sicknesses or life circumstances, your body will change over time. And that's the way it's designed to be. So if as a as a culture, if as a person, you're constantly fighting that, you're never going to win that battle. So um, what I do with the clients that I work with is we try to replace those, um, those core beliefs and those false stories we tell ourselves around our body and that being our worth. Um, our body is just the shell that carries us around, but our worth is on the inside. And so it's doing that work of unpacking all of that and realizing it was never about the body. It was never about the weight. It's about a deeper need to be loved, accepted enough, whatever it is that you're carrying around, whatever that false story is that you're telling yourself. And it's, um, I coach around like rewriting that and reframing those thoughts um, so that you can show up fully as yourself. I think a lot of times as women, we like hold back until we've done like, I don't know, lost certain amount of pounds or get a job or um, have children or get married or whatever it is. And um, our, in the meantime, our life is happening and it's passing us by. And so the coaching that I do is really helping women to step into who they are like right now in this moment and to live in the present and to live boldly. So how did you get about coaching? How did you start doing coaching? How did you decide to go into that? Um, I don't, uh, that's a good question. I don't really know. I think it's just been a slow progress. Like I said, kind of like a reflection in my Instagram of, um, doing the work on myself and then realizing that having conversations with women and realizing, oh my gosh, we all are telling ourselves these stories. We're all going through this and me wanting to, um, I'm always like a bring people along kind of person. Like I'm always like, come on, like we're doing this, like, let's go. That's just my personality. And so I think, um, I've been deeply impacted by women sitting with me in, in my, in my, in my pain and in my, um, hurt and allowing space for that. And I want to be able to provide that for other women as well, because I truly think that, um, women are are the answer to the problems that we have today. I know that sounds like very dramatic, but I think 
that women just need to step up. And I think one way that we can do that um, is um, when we're so preoccupied with our bodies, we can't stand up for justice. We can't stand up for like what's going on right now. We can't because we're so preoccupied with the way we look or losing weight or whatever it may be. Yeah, because a lot of women think they're the only ones that feel that way. And there's so many out there that, that I know I've talked to. There's so many women out there are like, no, I feel the same way. You feel that too? Oh, my gosh. And it's like a light bulb goes off on their heads when they realize that yep. it's not about what their body looks like. It's how they feel inside. That's a reflection of how they feel. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, growing up, I heard those things, but I was like, oh, that's just like so like cliche. That's like not real. But it really is. It really is real. And it really is true. Yeah. So um, how did you um, was there any kind of courses you had to take around this or to get where you're at? No, no. I mean, I feel like I, I would love to take some courses, but I feel like um, I have I've worked enough through it myself um, with professionals. I have tools now and it's just a matter of like reteaching those tools that I have. Like there's the old adage of like watch one, see one, watch one, do one, teach one. Right. So yeah. just that. Yeah. So again, just contact you on the Tracy Vasquez for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I Yep, on my front page, um, I do free 20 minute consultations. You can sign up for those um, and we can decide whether it's a good fit for us uh, to work together. Um, I'm going to pull that up right yeah, now. Do, so yeah, you can see it. Of course, it's still yeah. on the social media page, but yeah, I'll get it back. You said on the, the home page, you said, yep. Yeah, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's um, a link where you can sign up for. Um, there it is right there, guys. Yeah, I'd love to chat with you. Even if we don't decide to work together, like I'd love just to chat and let you know that you're not alone in, in those feelings that you have. So, yeah. yeah, I actually just went down and um did the Matt Talks and yeah. signed up for those today. So Yeah, those are super fun. So that came from, if you guys have watched that uh, show on Netflix, Cheer, um, it's a great, uh, they're just like, um, they're kind of like affirmation cards. Um, and that's something that helps me. I have them printed out like on my, by my kid, by my um, mirror. And I just like change them every so often, but it's nice to have those like positive affirmations around. It's part of rewiring your brain to think differently about yourself. Now, since you talked about Netflix, I'm going to jump ahead because we have to talk about Netflix because you got me onto a show that I have watched. I don't know how many times now. And you said you were so jealous when I first started watching it because it was the first time, even though it's been out forever. I know. I'm always jealous of my friends that I recommend shows to. And I'm like, oh, you get to experience it for the first time. I'm jealous. Yeah. For those that don't know, it's The Heart of Dixie yes. on Netflix. And it's not what you think it is, but the name says Dixie, but it's not. It's about a southern town, but it's about the friendships in a southern town. I mean, it's very progressive, I think, too, as well. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And I love it's almost like um, and this is the case in like several different shows. Like I think like Gilmore Girls, there's been several different ones, but the town is almost a character itself, too. Yeah. Yeah. But I got to know, were you Team George or Team Wade? Team Wade all the way. All the way. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm friends now because definitely Team Wade all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do love George because he played on Friday Night Lights and that's another one of my favorite shows. And so, you know, I have a soft spot for him, but for sure, Wade. Wade yeah, definitely Wade. Okay. Yeah. So now let's switch back because I just had to bring that up when I was on my mind because yeah. Netflix, girl, like you always, she has always suggestions on Netflix are on point. Because I've, well, I've I've watched all of Netflix, so that's why. <laughs> have you watched um still no Sweet Magnolias yet? Yeah, have you watched it? Yeah. What did you think? I uh, I loved it. I'm actually reading the books now, so I can find out what's going on. So yeah, I loved it. I did kind of like some of their like Southern sayings. I was like, nobody says that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But who knows? Maybe it's because of where they're at. Maybe nobody says it in North Carolina where we're at, but maybe somewhere else they might. Who knows? Maybe. That's maybe true. I don't know. It was good. I will say, though, I feel like it was um, like 10 different Hallmark movie plot lines per episode. Like there's just a lot going on. But basically in the books, there's a lot going on, too. So okay. <laughs> there's a lot going on. in the I, was book. Like, I feel like this is every Hallmark movie I've ever seen in one series. Pretty much, yeah. So now let's talk about you joining up with, is it Tanya? from? Yeah. 
Yeah. So, yeah. So we, um, we've been friends for a long time. We have like a crazy story of how we like met and like how our lives have intersected over and over again. But, um, yeah, we were having these conversations. I was um, talking to her about everything I was learning about um, diet culture and about um, intuitive eating and health at every size and really unpacking our society's obsession with um, food and with body and with um, just making our bodies look a certain way. And we were having these conversations. And as we were having them, we were like, you know, other women need to hear these conversations and they need to know that they're not alone. Like we talked about earlier. Um, and so we were like, let's start a podcast. So we did. And here we are <laughs> um, two years later, almost two years later. And it is so much fun. We love having conversations. So we have, we, um, write about, or we write about, we talk about different topics related to how do you let go of like your obsession with weight? Like, how do you stop weighing yourself? How do you just show up in the world? What do you do when you gain weight? Like, how do you, how do you sit with those feelings? Um, and then we also um, interview women who are also, are, it's called, we're not waiting. Like it's a pun on like, stop waiting for your life and like show up now. Mm -hmm. Um, Stop waiting until you lose 10 pounds. Stop waiting until you get married. Stop waiting until whatever, like your life is happening now and it, your life needs you now. And so we interview women who are also not waiting. Um, we do, we try to do a mix of women who work in the field of um, disordered eating or eating disorder recovery and a good mix of just women who are um, business owners, who are showing up, who are um, running their businesses and just crushing it. Um, so we do a good mix of both and, um, we do offer, um, group coaching. So we're actually getting ready. This is perfect timing that we're on this. It didn't, I didn't even plan it like this, but on Tuesday we're launching group coaching. So, um, and group coaching we do with women, we kind of walk them through, um, what intuitive eating is, um, what that looks like, how to approach things from a weight neutral standpoint. Um, and yeah, there's our Instagram feed. Um, and we have a few spots left. So if you're interested, um, you can definitely, there's a, a link in our bio on um, Instagram. You can also go to our website, we're not waiting.com. And there's a group coaching link there and you can sign up there. But it's helpful, I think, when you are going through this, like we talked about earlier, like I'm big on community. That's like we, why we started the mastermind, like not people not feeling alone in their struggles and having a place where they can come and where they can say, I'm going through this. And then someone else can say me too. Like most, like you said earlier, like when, when you hear someone else say me too, it's like the biggest relief to realize that you are not alone in what you're going through. So yeah. And we do tons of like free resources. Um, download guides we're big on like download guides and like taking what we talk about in the um in the podcast episode and then giving you some questions to kind of like work through on your own so like our most recent episode was about living in the present moment and diet recovery and so like sitting in those hard feelings of like i i think a, a lot of times our default when you are someone who has dieted a lot is if you feel uncomfortable you blame your body mm -hmm. And you want to change your body. So instead of that, that's like your default. So instead of that, like sit with those hard feelings. You're feeling uncomfortable, but it's not your body. Like something else is going on. Your body is trying to tell you that you need to dig deeper on something else. Maybe you're un unhappy at work. Maybe you're feeling like you're run down. Maybe you're feeling like you need connection with friends. There's something else going on. It's not always, you don't always need to lose weight to fix it. In fact, you never need to lose weight to fix it. Yeah, I will honestly say that the first time I read that light bulb moment of somebody saying, wow, I feel like that too. Somebody read one of my blog posts and told me, I'm so glad I'm not the only one that feels this way. And I'm like, that's where my niche is. I need to keep writing in my voice because I've had so many people along the way tell me I can't write the way I write on my blog because it's just not right to put it out there in the universe. I'm like, why is it not right to put it out there in the universe? It's my feelings. It's how I feel and it lets somebody else know they're not alone. So how is that not right? Absolutely. Yeah. So you guys were friends a long time. So college friends or just yeah, that. So in college. So we had mutual friends in college and then she lived in Arizona. She ended up moving to Raleigh to go to grad school. 
she, she was our roommate for like six months when she first moved here. Oh, well, Jorge and I were married and she um, lived with us for a little bit. And then we ended up, we were, we kept in touch, but like we weren't like close friends. And then we ended up teaching at the same school. And so it was just this whole, these, we have all these like, her husband is from Raleigh. So we have a lot of like connections. Like he knows a lot of people I know. It's, she jokes that everyone in Raleigh, it's like the, you know, that Kevin Bacon game, like six degrees of separation from Kevin. She's like, that's what, that's what it's like in Raleigh being friends with Tracy. And I was like, I guess so. I've been here a long time. I know a lot of people she's yeah, like, everyone been- knows you or knows someone that knows you. Yeah. Cause honestly with, the mastermind were like, well, how do you know? Well, we know everybody through Tracy. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah. everybody knows Tracy. <laughs> uh, that's what happens when you live somewhere a long time, I guess. <laughs> but you're not originally from here, right? Um, no, we've been here 27 years, but I grew up kind of like moving around a lot, like all over, all over the world, really. Um, but yeah, I wasn't born here. Okay, I want to, because you already hit on Jorge's name, I want to hit on how you met your husband, because I think that's a really cool story. Yeah, yeah. so after college, I um, went to Mexico for a year. I ran some English clubs and did some mission work down there, and I met him down there, and we dated long distance for like a year, I think, like long distance, right? (laughs) Mexico to uh, North Carolina. We saw each other in person like every three months. We would travel back and forth. Like I would go there, he would come here. And um, yeah, we got married and he went to NC State. He graduated with engineering degree and that's that. Wow. Yeah. Now, I will say, if anybody follows you on Instagram, you need to check out Tracy's stories because Tracy's stories are on point. She is like I, my idol, my hero as far as home improvement goes because she has done so much to this house of hers that I'm just like in awe of. And like one time there was a story, she was so upset with herself because she had put the door handles um, backwards at her linen closet and she was so upset with herself about it and I was like why she says because I don't I don't want to need a man to do anything I want to do it myself I want that that uh, pride that moment where I say hey I did that you know <laughs> yes to my detriment sometimes but yeah I'm a little stubborn when it comes to those things but um Jorge is so sweet and so patient he just lets me do my thing and then when I get myself in trouble he um comes to rescue me <laughs> But there's not a lot that he rescued you from, as I've noticed on your Insta stories. Yeah. Well, we have different ways to do things. We have different approaches to things. I'm like, just like, let's just do it and let's just not have a plan. And he's much more like, well, we have to like measure things. (laughs) Like, do we really though? (laughs) Can't we just eyeball it? But (laughs) you managed managed to do majority of your kitchen by yourself. Am I correct? Because he was gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's been a long process, like uh, probably several years, but this was like kind of like the last, like we painted cabinets, we painted the walls. Uh, we had already done like countertops and appliances a few years ago. So this was like the final like cherry on top. So what else is next for your home improvements? We're taking a break <laughs> for, for a minute. <laughs> um, yeah, well, it's, it's kind of how I've kept my sanity during – quarantine. I feel like it's a good channel for all my anxiety. Um, But we're going to take a little break. But after we take a break, we will be painting um, bathrooms, our two bathrooms, and our bedroom. So yeah, we painted when we first moved in, but that was like 15 years ago. And so everything, my style is just and my taste and what's trendy has changed since then. So (laughs) it's a never ending battle but I told I was telling a friend today like when you do one thing it leads to like 10 other things so we did the kitchen and now I'm like do we need new lights in here I need I just need to stop though like I need it's fine it's the light like, uh, maybe maybe well lights can change anything you, you yeah. can change your perspective on things hey I really like those lights you know yeah yeah and I would actually say if you're looking for lights I have got really great lighting from the habitat restore I actually bought a chandelier from there and I think it was like eight dollars for the the block cabin and it was it's gorgeous that's a good call i need to i need to go look yeah absolutely you're right because then you're repurposing or using i mean i had to spray paint it but still easy yeah you never know and now that i look at it i'm like oh i helped somebody else out because i was giving back to charity and everything else so plus i saved money so that's where the frugal mom come in so i'm good at that you know 
No, that's a great tip. I need to, I need to look there. You're absolutely right. We've brought some things there. Just, we changed, like, like you said, that we changed our doorknobs out. Um, and so we need to bring some stuff there. So maybe when I drop some stuff off, I'll take a look at what they have. Yeah. Now let's talk about something unusual about yourself. I ask everybody that question. What's something unusual that you're really like, you've never really told anybody before, but you're going to share with us. Oh, this is kind of embarrassing. Okay. Um, I feel like I've told people this before, but I don't like publicly like talk about it a lot. But um, I have this weird thing where I have to have the a volume on the TV on an even number. Hmm. <laughs> but I feel like when I've shared that before, I'm not the only one. If anyone is watching and they also do that, please comment so I don't feel alone. Um, <laughs> Or like the knob, it depends on like our old car. When you um, turn the volume on the stereo, it had like a number thing come up. Our new car, it's just like a dial. You just like turn it. Uh -huh. There's no number. But on our old car, it used to be a number that you would see on. So it had to be on an even number. <laughs> I've never known that about you. But then again, I kind of can see that now, now that you said it. Because I'm a little neurotic. <laughs> Now, you mentioned it earlier um, about you and Tanya teaching at the same school. You kind of have a different way of um, job with teaching. Tell us about that. Because that's yeah. Cool. So, yeah. So I um, left the classroom like three years ago. I think now. Um, and I teach online now, which is kind of cool. Like I kind of it's, it's, it's been different adjustment. It's definitely a different dynamic. Um, and the rapport that you build with your students is different. Um, but we, um, it's like I work for a company and we um, use Zoom and we Zoom into classrooms who can't um, keep teachers and long term subs are not really a great options for learning. Um, it's just like kind of like most times you can have good long term subs, but most time it's just like glorified babysitting. And so we work at a lot of, um, low performing, low income schools that can't keep qualified teachers. And so I have a classroom full of kids and we're on the computer and we're doing like virtual class. And it's, I mean, it's, it's been a really cool experience. I've really enjoyed it. So, yeah. You have like one school that you just work with or is it several schools that you work with? Several all over. I do. There are like some schools that, well taught cause we're done with school now, <laughs> but um, that I taught like two sections at the same school, but I taught in Texas, I taught in West Virginia, I taught in Illinois, and I taught in um, Milwaukee this year. So, yeah. And your subject that you teach? I teach Spanish. Yeah. So drop something in Spanish for us. I'm putting you on the spot there. Uh, <laughs> gracias uh, for la plática hoy. <laughs> and what was that? Thanks for the talk today. There you go. Yay. So is there anything else besides like if you body image, just contact you on your website through that form coaching, individual coaching or group. Do, would you do a group coach by yourself or would you rather prefer to do the group coaches with Tanya? Um, right now I'm not offering any group coaching um, for just body image. It's just like, in, so I didn't, I don't think I said this specifically earlier, but Tanya does like kind of like the food, um, like talking about intuitive eating and then I do the body image. So it's kind of why we work well together. Um, I have not, I have not yet offered a group, um, body image coaching, but I'm open to it. If there were enough people interested, I'm absolutely open to it. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause I think the body image with a group may, I mean, in the beginning it might be a little bit tough, but yeah. once they open up and people realize that they're not alone, then they, they might get more results from that. Who knows? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great idea. I hadn't even thought about it. Thank you. There you go. That's something we should have dropped in the mastermind. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll put a pin in that. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> so is there anything else you want to share with the audience? No, I think that's it. I would just encourage you, like, if this um, connected with you in any way, like, if you felt like my story or anything we talked about resonated, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm we're pretty good about probably best way is Instagram to reach out. I'm not as active on Facebook, um, but I'm good about answering DMS or if you have any questions or yeah. Yeah. The Instagram, you're, what are you on Instagram? I've got it scrolling, but say it out loud. Me, Tracy Vasquez and it's T R A C Y V A Z Q U E Z Vasquez. Um, yeah. And uh, podcast. 
it's podcast is we're not waiting. So we're on Apple, like iTunes, um, Google and Spotify. Um, and we have a separate Instagram for that and a separate website for that as well. Um, but feel free to reach out to us. Any of those, any of those places, we'd love to get you our group coaching closes on Sunday. So if you're interested in that, um, you can message me and, um, actually have a special price I can offer for, um, people who are watching this broadcast that's not on our website. So it's an exclusive deal. Ooh, exclusive deal. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will tell you just talking to Tracy and getting to know Tracy the last couple of years, every time I'm with her, you just feel so like encouraged when you leave her because Aww, she's got that, that personality that she's just so bubbly and like, but I've known her well enough now to know that if she's something's off, I can tell a little bit because she's still bubbly, but there's something quite not there. I mean, you're tired, <laughs> overwhelmed. So, but Tracy, thank you so much for coming on. Yes, thank you for having me. It was so I fun. Wait to have you come back on because we got some issues that we're going to talk about later that Tracy yes. has to, to come back on and chat. So, guys, <laughs> have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you back tomorrow night on a special edition of the um, honest and open conversation about race. And this time, it's the male edition. So, seven o'clock tomorrow night. Sounds good. I love you, Agnes.